Are you affected by the seven deadly sins of management? Stay tuned and find out on our next episode of Career Growth Made Easy. Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell. We're serving up episode 90 today, The Seven Deadly Sins of Management. Besides talking about them in some detail, you have to wonder, if you're in supervision or leadership, are they affecting you? What if you report to supervision or leadership? How are you being affected by some of these seven deadly sins? We're going to go over pride, greed, Lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. To start out, number one is pride. Maybe you're taking your position of leadership too far. Are you expecting everyone to respect you simply because you have a title, but you haven't earned their respect by putting in the work and appreciating the efforts of your coworkers? This can be very difficult to see and difficult to understand for people that are new in supervision. A name tag, a title, a fancy office, or a plaque on your desk doesn't allow you to get respect. You might feel you deserve it, but you really need to earn it. Being proud of who you are is not a crime. It's not a sin. Being proud of where you work the same. But when you start to take your position, your position of authority, too pridefully, that can be a problem. If you once were promoted from within, do you remember how you got along with your coworkers and colleagues? Do you remember how you liked to be treated by management? And if there was a manager that was acting differently, perhaps a little boastful, prideful, cocky maybe? Do you remember how it felt when you were around them? Maybe you even wanted to avoid them. Now we turn the tables, and if you're in supervision or a leadership role, think about it. Put yourself to the test. Has pride affected you? You might be even thinking that you deserve that next promotion, but you may not even be ready for it, and it might not be your time. Pride can affect you in those ways. You have to remember productivity, good communication, respect of coworkers and colleagues is important. So make sure you put your pride in check. Next on the list is greed. We'll define that as having unrealistic expectations for both you and your coworkers. Maybe you focus on how you can make more money, get more attention, rather than thinking about the customer's needs, or maybe even not thinking about the limitations of your environment. We'll briefly explore both of those. When you forget that there is an end customer in mind, the end paying customer, and you focus on yourself, that's greed. Unrealistic expectations means that you think you deserve more. Again, maybe more money, more attention, or more focus on you. You have to realize, in many cases, you're a cog in the wheel. You're a cog in the gear. You help contribute to the overall production, the overall environment of the company. We need each and every moving piece. It needs to be functional and doing well. If we forget not only about the end-paying customer, we'll eventually have less of those because we're focusing inward on ourselves. Something else that I have on a prior episode, and I'll look that up and share that in the show notes as well, talks about we all have customers, both upstream and downstream. What I mean by that is that not only is there the end paying customer, sure, we need those, but there's also the people you work with within your facility that hand you off work and that you hand work off to after you've completed your task or activity or whatever process you're supposed to do. 
When you start to think that your function, your position is more important than others, that's where greed comes in. Then you might be as bold as to go so far as to say, I'm not working here anymore until you give me more money, or I need another promotion because. Demonstrate your capabilities. Demonstrate what you're able to do with communication, with process, with flow, with improvement to the company, and remove the greed. Do for others. After all, you're being paid to do a job, so go ahead and do it well. Next on our list is lust. Now, hold on. I know that might sound funny about one of the seven deadly sins of management, but let me explain. You might be getting distracted or even frustrated at other managers or their teams for their successes. Maybe you're not able to appreciate the efforts of those around you. What if you want other customers, other promotions, other assignments, the ones that you find more interesting or more satisfying than the ones you're assigned to? That's part of lust, wanting of other things when you're not deserving. Now, there's a fine line being proactive and being visionary and looking forward into the future and having a hunger, having a drive. That passion is fine. But it's when you get distracted or frustrated by others' efforts, especially when they're achievements, and you're saying, I should have had that project. I should have been able to do that. I did that last year really well. If I did it again, I would have done great, and I would have been the one getting the attention. So how do you combat lust with regards to one of the seven deadly sins of management? Wanting other jobs, other tasks, wanting to be on other teams that are successful, There's nothing wrong with that, I'd say, if it's toned down and it's controlled. But again, don't let yourself get distracted or frustrated by it. If you want to see yourself moving into other roles, that's great. Again, I mentioned that's visionary and that's driven. You have goals in mind. But with that said, do it respectfully and do it at the right speed. Jumping from task to task, job to job, team to team is more of a hopper experience, right? And it doesn't always look good on your resume and it doesn't always reflect well within your company. Now, if you have a position that does allow you to rotate, that's great. Just be cautious and monitor your feedback so that it doesn't appear you're always looking for the next shiny object, right? The next big prize. Fourth on our list is envy. We'll define that as wanting praise when others are getting celebrated for their accomplishments. It's a little bit similar to lust, but differs. You also get frustrated when someone else gets appointed as a project leader or gets recognized instead of you. Another way to see it would be if you're keeping important leads or helpful information to yourself so you can take sole credit for the ideas rather than collaborating on the efforts with others. So these seven deadly sins kind of intermix. And so sometimes it's hard to draw a defining line, but think about it. How do you take on your daily work environment? Have you ever been guilty of one of these seven deadly sins? I know as I've risen up through management, I have, and I've had to put myself in check. If I didn't catch myself, my regular performance review or the leadership I reported to certainly would. Worst case, Your team members could come to you and tell you how they feel poorly that how you're acting in such a negative way or that their feelings are hurt or that they don't agree with your decisions. Sometimes you have to stick by them because the company has certain policies and roles that get rolled down, so you have to enforce them. But it's really how you do it. Do you do it with passion and empathy and consideration or do you do it with an iron fist? just pounding on your desk and keeping everything in check. As we move into number five, it's gluttony. Now that sounds a little funny for a management sin, but we'll define it as taking on more work or more projects than you can handle and then falling behind or failing because of it. You simply don't understand when enough is enough. You think that you can multitask and that's a fault because you lose focus and perform worse than usual. So wanting all the work and all the projects is not a bad thing when it comes to helping out your company or taking on a big load. 
But when it's wanting it for the wrong reasons, that can be a problem. When you want all the spotlight on you, when you want all the attention, all the focus, all the praise, you're going to get overloaded. And then when that happens, you'll fall behind. You'll think you can do it through multitasking because you've got it. I can handle this. And you eventually wear down. And as mentioned, you're likely to perform worse than usual. So sometimes we need to put ourselves in check when it comes to our amount of work and our diversity of our projects. Occasionally taking on a heavier workload is okay because work is cyclical, right? There's ebbs and flows, especially in the production cycle. Sometimes you're heavier when there's demand and sometimes you're lighter. But if you're always wanting to go full steam and take on too much, you're likely to eventually crash and burn. So just be careful of that. Next is wrath. I mentioned this phrase earlier, but I'm going to tell you for wrath, that would literally be ruling with an iron fist. Choosing to always go full steam ahead without looking at the bigger picture or stopping to notice the small details that are just as important. And when mistakes are made, it's all you focus on and it becomes all consuming It even halts your productivity and your progress. I've known a manager or two in my time, in fact, have even worked for one in a specific case I can recall to this day, even though it's been well over 10 years. And this manager was loud, aggressive, rather than assertive. There's a difference. And he literally ruled with an iron fist. When he wanted something and it wasn't getting done, he would yell loudly and pound his fist on his desk. What happens then when you have a personality like that, whether you're a literal manager over a team of people or you're working with a team of people, you are starting to be seen as someone confrontational, combative, and likely someone that people don't want to be around. So what happens? In these cases, with this wrath aspect, you think you're being assertive, diligent, getting the job done. Part of that is true, but you're not, and that's the result, you're getting the work done in many cases, but you're not seeing the after effects, such as plowing through people just to get to your end goal, to get to that finish line. And if you were to turn around, you'd be leaving a literal trail of dead bodies behind you. And what I mean by that is your tone, your style is so aggressive that other people don't want to work with you. You plow through them to get to the end result, almost as if you have a singular vision. You don't take into account your peers, your coworkers, feelings, or the activities or tasks they're working on. It's all about you and getting to the end the way you see it, the way you want it. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in check. Is the goal, is the focus that I have or that you have, is it correct? Is it the right one for this particular project, this application, or this situation? Could it be that others have different ideas that might help me get to the finish line with them together rather than focusing on myself and a singular goal? Have you ever tried to work with someone after having a wrath type experience? If they've worked for that Iron Fist manager, you can almost see the scars, the virtual scars on them. They almost become defensive and worried about when the next time is that manager is going to speak out. If you were someone that was that person that plowed through others to get the job done, sometimes management sees that as productive and successful, a leader, but they don't see the after effects. You're someone that a team is not likely to want to work under you. It's the way you achieve the results is the problem. So if you're affected by wrath, think about different ways to do things. Asking cordially, respectfully, even though you have the authority, can go a long way empathizing and understanding your peers, your coworkers, and sometimes your subordinates. As we wrap up, number seven, Of the seven deadly sins of management, we roll into sloth. How could that possibly affect something about management? Well, I'll tell you. I see it as becoming lazy 
and delegating all your tasks to team members or subordinates. Using your position of leadership to mitigate your responsibilities so you have more time off. You might even use your title as an excuse to be more supervisory and remove yourself from being hands-on rather than being involved like you used to, expecting everyone to do work except you. You're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy the fruits of their labor, the fruits of their results. Part of that is normal with regards to management that your team is supposed to produce for themselves and for you. Sometimes your team gets recognized and sometimes you personally get elevated for your leadership. That's okay. But backing out completely, being completely hands off and expecting everyone around you to do everything and for you to do very little, to lift a finger to help or to work with them is a problem. I would say interacting with your team, knowing the situations of their projects, the statuses, how they're doing, their needs, what their progress is, those things are all important. There are metrics, if you will, some of them, for how your team members are progressing and how your department is growing and doing. At the end of the year, whenever performance reviews are handed out, something needs to be measured against their progress and yours, your effectivity as being a leader or a manager. When you're sloth-like, you have very little to report out. You might even have a pride, greed, or lust problem by taking credit for your team members' results. Don't forget, they're the ones that did the work, and they're doing the same thing on the reports, saying, I did this, I worked with fellow team members, we produced this, we were able to complete this project or this mission. You are not the one doing it if you're in management. You're the one that should be leading and guiding them. And as part of that, sometimes you do have to do some heavy lifting, meaning one of your team members may be ill, they might be out sick, there could be a family emergency, the department load shifts and you become your team becomes overloaded or overburdened for a period of time, you might have to step in. Especially if you were one that was once in their ranks and was promoted upward, you know how to do their tasks. You know how to do their activities and services, and you can help out when the department is at a high load level. Don't be someone that delegates and even over-delegates the work and gets rid of it all. So you can sit back and just watch your team kind of kick back in your chair. That's not going to leave a positive image in their minds. And eventually you'll get found out that you're being underproductive and not contributing. I hope the seven deadly sins of management, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth have helped you rethink where you work and how you work. Whether you're in a position of management or not, how do these things affect you in your daily life? I've used the phrase, put yourself in check, a couple times today, and for good reason. If you're the one that's being affected by one or more of these, do that self-analysis. If you're unfortunately being affected by one or more of these seven deadly sins from your supervision or leadership, that takes some time to work around and work with having gentle conversations, but focused conversations with your leadership, it's possible you can educate them on how you're feeling and the fact that you feel you're not being treated well. But that's a cautious road to go down. You certainly can, and I have, but it's all about how you approach it, the discussion, and hopefully both sides are willing to adjust to come to a happy medium. This has been episode 90 of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast, The Seven Deadly Sins of Management. Please share our information with others. We're looking to grow as quickly as we can and help as many people as we can. We're at Craig Ansell on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. You can always go to our website, craigansell.com, and grab some of our free resources. They're up there and ready for the taking. I think we have about a dozen to choose from, so we should hit almost anybody's needs. Just scroll through, pick what you want, and download. I hope you have a great week ahead. We'll talk next week. See ya.
Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.